Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. And in this episode of The Shack Show, I'm going to be talking about what's in my spring plug bag and uh, from everything from the lures that I'll be throwing to uh, the soft plastics. Uh, the only thing I probably don't have that I would be throwing in the uh, in the spring would be live eels. That's probably the only thing I would not I don't have with me, obviously, because it's the winter. But it's something that is a main part of my uh, my my gear that I use. One moment. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, Let's start with, uh, I mean, should we start with the plugs first, I guess? Why don't we start with the plugs first and then I will get into soft plastics that I use. Uh, I'm not really so much gonna be talking about the plug bags, but um, I think that I'll probably, cause I, I've talked about plug bags in the past, but what I'm gonna talk about today is specifically the lures that I use um, from early, early spring all the way through late spring into the summer uh, and sticking with like spring patterns and everything like that. So I'm gonna start with my daytime plugs and uh, I'll probably just set them out here behind me um, and we will uh, get going with it. All right, so let's start with probably my number one favorite of all time spring topwater plug that sometimes is the only thing I'll bring with me. And that is the Rebel Jumping Minnow. The Rebel Jumping Minnow is a small spook um, and this thing catches absolutely enormous fish all the way down to schoolies. It is one of, one of my favorite things to do in the spring is fishing with small uh, spook style plugs in really shallow water. Uh, the fun part about that is those bass are generally uh, gonna be feeding pretty aggressively when they're on those flats because they're on those flats to feed and uh, throwing little spooks at them uh, is awesome. You get a, an epic topwater blow up. Um, as I talked about in the last few videos, uh, as far as locations that I'm fishing, in the spring I'm primarily fishing in estuaries and then occasionally I'll be fishing off of the beaches and very rarely I'll be going into the rocks and boulder fields. Although there are times where I'll be fishing um, in like back bay areas in the spring as well. So it's all basically the same thing. I kind of see estuaries and rivers and back bays as very, very similar where there's a good amount of current and uh, yet there's shallow muddy flats that drain out of water, warm up and tend to be the places where in the spring the bass tend to congregate. So number one all time, as I was saying, is the Rebel Jumping Minnow, it's a small spook. One of my favorite ways to catch bass in the spring is on small spooks, um, just because they're just so, so productive. And you can catch bass that are seriously big with them too. Like I've had many bass into the 40, 45 inch range on these plugs. So they catch big fish if they're around as well. So that's why I love them so much. Uh, next up is just a slightly bigger spook. Uh, and if I see now we're going to be struggling with like, can I pull all my plugs out without them being all tangled up one at a time? Probably not, but we'll do our best here. Uh, so this one is a little Yozuri. Uh, I actually believe they call it like a pencil popper of some sort, but it's, it's works most like a spook. So it's a little spook. It's a little bit bigger than the, uh, it's a little bit bigger than the Rebel Jumping Minnow, but this Yozuri spook does a great job of just presenting a little bit bigger profile, makes a little bit different frequency in the water, and sometimes can uh, get bass that are a little bit bigger to, to bite. Although I've had many scenarios where I'd be throwing this and I'll be getting nothing and then I'll throw on the Rebel Jumping Minnow and I'll immediately start catching fish. So always, you know, give and take as far as like what's a better spook. Uh, I feel like the Rebel Jumping Minnow is kind of a gold standard, but this is a very close second. All right, so now let's go into a little bit of more of like a wooden spook. Um, I love Fishing Spooks is a little bit bigger one. This is a Pumbaa Plugs Walker, uh, and it's my all-time favorite spook uh, for the spring, fall, summer, like all time around. I mean, the, the walker just really gets it done when it comes to catching just large numbers of big bass. Uh, Puma Plugs Magnum Walker, one of my favorites of all time. Um, and it, it casts well, it works extraordinary on the surface of the water, 
and the bass just love it, especially big bass. So that's why I love this so much. All right, so now let's move into more like conventional poppers. There's one brand that I really, really like in the spring, especially when there's sand deals around, both the small version and the big version when there's sand deals around, just uh, it is just crazy how good these things are. So let's start with the Junior. So the Smack It Junior is one of my favorites for early, early spring. I'm talking like first schoolies that are coming into Cape Ann uh, using this little popper and maybe back bays and uh, and in certain scenarios I'll be using them in estuaries when I when the current isn't too strong I like to pop this thing around it's truly uh, a super fun plug to use in the early early spring um, mimics sand deals perfectly for some reason that noise and it's just a very noisy plug as you can probably hear it's it's very noisy and it gets the attention of the schoolies for sure and catches big bass. So then you have the Smacket Senior, which is just a bigger Smacket. Again, great for when there's a little bit bigger bass around, a little bit later spring, or when you have sand deal blitz or sand deals around. Uh, this thing absolutely kills it. Um, just like it used to be a classic, especially off of a lot of the sandy beaches. Um, it, it used to be a classic for catching really, really big bass. I mean, it just puts in work and. Uh, it's again, very noisy plug, gets the attention of the bass, uh, has this great popping sound, and uh, definitely when there's more like slack water, just you can light them up on this thing for sure. So now we, we're gonna go into stuff that I fish primarily at night, uh, and minus maybe a Danny plug, but other than that, everything that I'm fishing here, I fish primarily at night or right at sunset. Um, and, hmm, what should I start with? It's, this is a hard one. Um, you know what? I'll start with a classic. So should we start with the small one or the big one first? We'll start with the small one first. Um, so to start us off here, the Redfin is one of my favorites and is a classic plug uh, that just catches fish. This is the smaller Redfin. I don't even know. They might make a smaller one or maybe a medium one, but this is a really small Redfin. Um, I load my Redfins. It's not rocket science. To me, if it sinks just like neutrally sinks, um, uh, it's pretty good, uh, and that's kind of what I go for when it comes to loading them. I'm just getting a little bit more casting distance. I feel like with the um, the smaller red fins, uh, you really do need to load them to get any sort of casting distance out of them. So uh, yeah, very productive at night, especially when there's small bait around like sand eels. Uh, or maybe a small herring. The bigger one definitely is amazing when there's herring around, but for sand eels or any thin profile bait, sometimes we have a lot of rain bait around in the spring, this can be absolutely deadly. Um, same thing here, a little bit bigger redfin this time. So this is the big redfin, uh, definitely one of my favorites when it comes to there being herring around. A lot of the time you'll see the herring jumping out of the water at night or at least hear it and uh, the bass crashing around after, after them. And when that's the case, I love throwing red fins. It looks like an injured, uh, an injured herring to them up on the surface of the water uh, or just under the surface of the water and they explode on red fins. It's pretty epic to watch them hit. Although I have the hardest time keeping bass pinned when it comes to red fins, uh, unless they really, really eat it. I always seem to drop big bass on red fins, but I really love red fins for at least getting that bite, you know? Like if it's a tough night, sometimes the red fins like the only thing that really puts in work. So now we can kind of go to um, another one that I really like, and that is the Danny plug, and I'll go into some other needlefish stuff near a second, but um, another one I'm a huge, huge fan of is the, I'm just trying to make sure this doesn't fall down into the depths of my plug bag. It's such a small needle fish, but we'll get, we'll get there in a second. So um, this is definitely uh, an awesome plug. All Danny plugs, in my opinion, that are up on the surface are great for the spring, especially when you're trying to get big bass to eat. And when they're on herring, or anything like that, if you're having a really hard time getting them to eat, uh, having something that is very slow moving, uh, gives them more time to see it, um, but not too much time because you do wanna make sure they don't understand what it is, but it just is so enticing to them 
that they have to give it a bite and see if uh, it is what they want. And uh, when there's herring around during the day and at night, uh, Danny plugs are fantastic. You can speed them up and let them die down a little bit deeper under the surface of the water, or you can work them really slow right up on the surface, and they are absolutely fantastic both ways. All right, and then the other one I really love, or we'll get, I guess we'll go into, should do, yeah, we'll start, we'll do some needlefish first. So we'll start with the small one. This is a Pumbaa Plugs needlefish. This is a really, really small needlefish. Uh, in certain scenarios, and if you have heavier tackle, um, you do have to use like an, a casting egg for this. But otherwise, um, with a light enough rod, you can definitely cast this out far enough to be dangerous. Uh, this is a deadly, deadly little lure. When there's sand eels around and you have huge bass feeding on them, just creeping this in across the surface of the water, I've had some of the most ridiculous nights on this little tiny needlefish right here. It's another Pumbu Plugs needle. It's really, really small. has the smallest little VMC hooks on it. But uh, yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic little floating needle. And I love more floating needles uh, during the during this time of year, mostly because I'm trying to mimic sand eels than any other bait, maybe an injured herring. But for the most part, I'm trying to mimic sand eels and I like floating needles because I feel like the sand eels kind of shoot across the surface of the water sometimes when they're frightened and uh, I like needlefish for that. So I also have a big needle. This is another Pumbaa Plugs needle. This is this, like classic needlefish if I can get it out. I quite have enough space in my bag. There we go, we're good. Um, I love this needle all year round, but in the spring as well, if I need something that's a much bigger profile uh, for some for whatever reason, um, having a nice floating needle that's just a little bit bigger, beefier, uh, is an awesome, awesome one to use. Um, and I'll use this everywhere, whether it's both of them, any needle fish I'll use everywhere, but beaches are great and so are estuaries and back bays for needles. I love them there as well. So that's like one of my all time, like really enjoy that plug for many reasons, but that in particular, this time of year can do some serious, serious damage. Um, should we all end with like a super classic, but this one maybe is not as classic for a lot of, for a lot of people. Um, here is a, here is a little, uh, a little, this is a stick shad, a Sibyl stick shad. These are, this is like when there's big herring around and the bass are feeding very aggressively on it. Uh, like they're blitzing you run this through a school of big bass they they can't ignore it uh it's a big profile it's heavy you got to reel it quick especially in shallow water and uh it's like the medium sinking one i would love if i couldn't find it in a floating version i feel like the floating versions are hard to find but if i could have found this in some like more of a floating version that would be awesome i know there's a bunch of wooden ones out there that i love too but uh I love the Sabils, they just really do catch fish. I've caught some unbelievably big bass on them before and uh, they're just great for like that kind of estuary or, or river mouth type fishing where you have some strong current and you can just rip this stuff through it when they're blitzing on the herring and it's, it's super awesome. So that's a, a favorite of mine for sure when there's big bass around. And then another one that's a favorite of mine when the bass are feeding actively at night and they're blitzing on herring and they're going all over the place. Darter, super stark darter, just catch giant fish. In current, it's super fun to fish too because you can really feel the feedback from it and you can just sit this thing right in a rip and you can work it really nice and get it down in there. Uh, and the bass go crazy for this, especially big bass. Um, another just absolute killer and a classic plug that just absolutely catches monster, monster fish. Awesome. So that's like a good run through of like pretty much every plug that I will keep. And those plugs, I mean, I, I throw other things in there and I mix it up a bit, you know, depending on what's going on. But that's like the, what I would say are my like go to's for are in my plug bag all the time when it comes to like nighttime and daytime, there's probably gonna be a, a few extra things when I'm only fishing during the day and a few extra things when I'm only fishing during the night. But for the most part, those are my core group of things that I'm gonna keep in my bag for all time during the spring. All right, so let's move to soft plastics. Um, soft plastics are probably what I'll catch my first 
bass of the year on on Cape Ann, uh, or probably first bass of the year period, but definitely on Cape Ann it will be probably soft plastic. And it will probably be a small Algag Whippet fish. This is the like, I don't even know, this is the half ounce Algag Whippet fish. I like the lighter ones, especially for estuaries and back bays. The bass just go crazy for this. You can catch big, big bass on Algags, but um, schoolies love them and you can just catch as many bass as you want. If you drop this in front of a fish's face, you reel it slow, give it maybe a twitch every once in a while. Um, they just go crazy for it in the spring. One of my go-tos for just trying to locate bass and uh, get bass that are finicky to feed. Uh, I'll go probably up to maybe an ounce, an ounce and a half. I, I don't know, what is this, two ounces maybe? This is an ounce and a half uh, algag. Um, this is as big as I'll go. I don't really like fishing anything heavier than this, but if I am in fishing very strong current and deep water, sometimes you wanna go with a little bit heavier algag, get it out there, get it down into that strike zone and kind of work a rip. Then I'll be going up a little bit in weight. Uh, the other thing that you can, you, I fish pretty equally with them are bucktails, whether they are, I mean, this is a huge bucktail, but um, any sort of bucktail is awesome. Uh, I use many different types of bucktails, whether it's that or maybe an s, &S bucktail, which is great. Um, this is like half ounce um, or like three quarters ounce, like a, what is this one, a Spiro bucktail. Uh, these are great too, a little bit less hair. Um, yeah, so bucktails are awesome. I fish them pretty much interchangeably with the uh, Algag Whippet fish, very similar way I work them basically, and uh, they, they all catch fish like crazy. Uh, then you just, I go right into like some classics. Um, my During the day and at night, sluggos are just awesome. I like the white, like bone colored ones during the day. This is a, like a six inch sluggo. I, seven inch sluggos are great. Here's a black one that's and one that I'll use at night during the spring. That's awesome. I rig them all with owner beast hooks. Um, I can't, I don't know what the exact weights are on them, but uh, owner beast hooks are awesome. Uh, I do have them over there, but I'm not gonna really get into that stuff right now um, as far as terminal tackle goes. But uh, same thing, here's a bigger one. Here's like a nine inch black sluggo. This is when there's some bigger fish in the area. I'm definitely throwing this at night. It's probably one of the first things I'll catch a really big bass on in the spring are sluggos or live eels, really. Those are my two like main, main go-to, like I really wanna catch a big bass plugs. Uh, I really like rig sluggos too, both in the bone and in the, the black and white. They're just kind of my, or the, the bone and the, um, uh, the black colors are just amazing. Uh, I really, really like the rig sluggos just cause they're more weightless and you can really twitch them across the surface of the water, reel them slow. You can do a lot of different things. You can either give them a lot of action or a little action. You can drift them and uh, man, the bass just go crazy for them. Another one of my favorites that I'll use is the, uh, the GT eels. Now you can get them in so many different sizes. These are the gravity tackle eels. Um, whether you're fishing them with a little jig head on it and bouncing it off the bottom, or I'm fishing it with like a, an owner beast hook the same way, like a swim bait, rig like a swim bait. Um, they're just an epic plug that just, or an epic soft plastic that just catch really big finicky bass in the spring. I love fishing them in estuaries. They just produce, and they'll produce pretty much anywhere, but estuaries especially, estuaries and sand beaches are just epic for these. Uh, and then, yeah, I pretty much think that, oh, I got one more. Here's a special one like if i'm fishing a place where i have a lot of herring i know there's herring and i'm not catching anything and i just want to really get the attention of a bass i'll slow roll a big paddle tail swim bait across the bottom of the like water column and nine out of ten times when you're getting nothing and you've been fishing all night long and you slow roll this can be a night saver where you're like you'll be getting nothing and getting nothing and then like you'll get like a 35 inch bass on this and it's just like the greatest thing ever so a big paddle tail is probably the last thing that i'll pull on my bag but when i do it can save the night for me and it has many many occasions so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like this video please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time